Join us for a look at Leading the Charge, the third expansion for Disney's Sorcerer's Arena from the op, who we have to thank for sending us a review copy. Like the expansions that came before, Leading the Charge does require a copy of Disney's Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances. If this is your first time hearing about Sorcerer's Arena, or you're just interested in learning more before hearing about this review, check out our Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances core set review on the blog, YouTube, or as part of episode 201 of our podcast. I also invite you to check out our reviews of the first two expansions, Turning the Tide and Thrills and Chills, which you can find in the same spots. Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances Leading the Charge comes from Sean Fletcher and the Op. It was published earlier this year and has an MSRP of $19.99 US dollars. As we've grown to expect from these Sorcerer's Arena expansions, you get three new characters along with any new rules to support them. Now, in, those case, in this case, those characters are Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story and, well, later his own movie, Scar from The Lion King, and Elsa from Frozen. Now, as far as new rules go, the only thing here is a new status effect. Now, you can check out what you get in the box through our Leading the Charge unboxing vid on YouTube, and we'll also note that unlike the other two expansions, there is no, uh, not yet an errata for this set as of recording. It does show that the player guide will be coming soon on their website though, so you'll want to check when you get your copy. In general, you get the same thing as we've seen in all of these so far. A plastic insert that's really only good for getting the stuff to you in good shape, pen cards for each character, bigger character cards, one for each character, a single folded sheet explaining how to use this expansion, though one whole page is an ad because there's so little new stuff here, some punch boards and the standees. Now, as you can see in the unboxing, there is a big change here in regards to the standees that I was very happy to see. They are now packaging these differently, and I don't know if the second printings of the original expansions are going to do this the same, but I hope they do. They now come in a very tight, small Ziploc bag and are stacked in a specific order. This was done because now there's only one piece of plastic film on one side of each of the standees and bases, and that film is much easier to remove than the previous film, which was a big relief to me. I really did hate the film on these tokens in the core box and previous expansions. It's also worth noting that the quality of these components all perfectly matches that which is in the other set. No color differences to set the cards apart or anything like that. Now, as for new rules, there's really not a lot to talk about here. First off, there is the rule for constant abilities, but this has been in every single one of Sorcerer's Arena expansion so far, so we're not going to cover it again here. I figure this one's probably going to end it up adding into the rules for the base set at some point in a, later, in a later printing, since it has been in every single one of the expansions. Then there's a new static effect that Elsa can generate called Invulnerable. When damage would be dealt to a character with the Invulnerable, that prevents the damage and removes the invulnerable. So it's a one-time protection. Yep. Now, moving on to the characters, we'll cover each of them. First, we have Scar, who's a really nasty character who's all about being the king of the hill and controlling the victory point squares in the arena. His skill bumps a rival off a of victory point space, and then Scar takes his spot. All that costs is any movement card for any character discarded. Then when on that spot, all the rivals, all your enemies, heal less every time they're healed. Now to make this nastiness, add to this nastiness, make it a little worse, he is also one of, as far as I know, only two, but few characters in the game that can cause an opponent to lose crowns they've already earned. Now along with this, he's also a very solid control character who can often move his allies along with him, which is great for controlling the board. And then true to character, Scar also has the ability to earn crowns by taking out one of his own with his treacherous plot card. Now, Elsa is one of the most thematic characters we've seen, and the way that her deck highlights her own hatred of her own magic is extremely well done. This comes out through her ability to draw cards from her deck and keep the non-magical cards she draws, as well as her ability to banish, banish her own magic cards to make her invulnerable. In addition, being able to become invulnerable combined with many cards that immobilize rivals in ice make her a solid defensive character. Mm -hmm. She combos particularly well with characters who also dig into your deck, but on the opposite side are looking for magic cards. Though in that case, you may want to limit the, ban limit the banishing. 
Finally, we've got Buzz Lightyear, who's one of the best range damage dealers in the game. Now, his core skill is do one damage to an opponent that's already been damaged who is exactly two squares away. So Buzz becomes all about being in the right place at the right time. Now, this combos with a number of ranged and melee damage cards, including one that hits opponents one, two, and three squares away. As for getting into the right spot, his deck also has a number of powerful movement cards, including one that lets him bring an ally with him, covering up to half of the board, and an ability that lets him move through rivals and draw cards in the process. So, what did you think of these new characters? So of the three, Scar was the most interesting. I love playing Scar, and I hate playing against Scar. With Scar in the arena, your whole strategy has to change, especially if you usually focus on controlling the victory point squares, or hexes, I should say. They're not squares. This is especially true if you like to play a character that needs you to use those spots. For example, if I am playing Sorcerer's Arena and we are doing a draft at the beginning of the game and my opponent drafts Scar, there is no way I'm taking the Horn King. Indeed, and it's characters like this and, and choices like this that they've built into the game that really bring out the strength of that mm -hmm. drafting system as opposed to people just showing up with their favorite team every time. Next up, I really enjoyed playing Buzz Lightyear and I also like playing against him. The big focus in both cases is that exactly two hexes away rule. When facing him, I'm always watching exactly where all my characters are standing and where they're positioned and trying to always end my turns either next to him where possible and using abilities like immobilize or afraid to make sure he can't get into that right position. When playing him, it's trying to make sure you get that skill to go off every single round if you can, as well as upgrading him as quick as possible, because then he does even more damage. Timing mean, can be important here, so you need to think about where he's going to be in the initiative line against other mm -hmm. players when drafting. I also enjoyed playing Elsa in the few games I've gotten to use her in. I've yet to find a perfect combo for her, but I do love how frustrated my opponents get when that invulnerable status comes up. At some point, I need to try to team her up with Sorcerer Mickey and Fusilier and see if I can actually set it up so that no matter what, I can always draw the top card of my deck because I already know it from the previous character. So I should know what it works. It should work in theory, but I've yet to actually try that combo myself. Yeah, I think she's got a lot of potential, but it will be interesting to see if they nerf her at all when they do release that player guide eventually. True. Really, though, overall, all three of these characters are cool. I, I would happily play in, 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 any of them. I would happily draft any of these characters. They all have their own merits. They're all fun to play. They even work pretty good as a combo of the three, just those three characters, as well as playing them with other characters. Like, I, there's, there's no character I don't like here. Yeah, this is really a solid character package overall, if not much more than that, just that. Yeah, that's that's my only real disappointment with this one is we didn't get some cool new rules. We we like like we got new terrain tiles with turning the tide and we got ocean tiles on the board that kind of changed the flow of the game or with the last expansion with thrills and chills. You got character tokens. I was really hoping to see this third expansion because those other two were out to maybe use those rules or give me something totally new. Well, I would have loved to have seen the two expansions previous lead to this one kind of in a tree. Like have Elsa generate ice arena tiles or have Scar have Fausa character tokens. I think that would have been brilliant. Yeah, it's uh, again limited by the abilities in the mobile game there as well. So they've got to they've got to sort of deal with uh, keeping within that that lane that's been established for them. See, I wonder if they do have to keep that up. Like so far, they're sticking to it. How I wonder if the game will branch off more as time goes on. Of course, the opposite side of this is that the of the three expansions that are out there, this one's simplest. Like it's definitely the easiest to integrate to the core game or to teach new players because there's nothing new to learn. You have three new characters and one really simple to understand status effect. Yeah, in fact, this might be a good first buy if you're mm -hmm. looking to expand, as it really doesn't overwhelm what you're already used to with all that much new, uh, just the constant effects that everything has now. Yet again, the op has provided another great expansion for a great game. Uh, three new characters for Sources Arena that are a lot of fun to play, and I got to say, quite challenging to play against. Uh, the lack of new rules makes this particular one the most accessible of the three, I would say. 
and would actually, as Sean just said, I think this would be my recommendation for anyone thinking if you're going to buy the core game and just one expansion or you own the core game and you're curious about the expansions, this is the one I would go with. Even for those picking up all three, this is probably the one I would start with. And I've got to say props to the op for hearing the complaints about the film and doing something about it. Well, that's it for our look at the Leading the Charge expansion for Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances, the third and last expansion released so far, that is until At the Ready hits later this year. Of the three expansions released for this game so far, what one interests you the most and why? Tell us about it in the comments. Or better yet, head over to our Discord at discord.tabletopbellhop.com to start up a conversation.